welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the NanoPi M4, which has been supplied for review by Friendly Elec. Now, this is an RK3399 based single board computer with a very interesting specification. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we have the NanoPi M4, and if we look at the end of the box, you can see this is the uh, two gigabyte version. There are two versions of this board, a two gigabyte RAM version and a four gigabyte RAM version. And the list price for the two gigabyte version is a $75, but uh, in September 2018, when I'm making this video, it's currently being sold for $65 on the uh, Friendly Elec website. And the price for the uh, four gigabyte version is $95. So let's get inside the box. This should be a straightforward unboxing. Even for me, there we are. Straight out, oh, lots of things. What have we got here? Um, those are uh, those are antennas, aren't they? This is a board with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so those clearly plug in for uh, wireless connectivity. And this is the board itself. Where do we go? Is it coming? Come here, come here, come here. There we are, there's the board. And out of the bag, crinkle, crinkle. Here we have the uh, NanoPi M. Four. And uh, the first thing you're probably thinking is, that looks slightly familiar. And uh, if I bring in a uh, Raspberry Pi 3, there it is, look, you can see that the uh, NanoPi M4 has the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi. So even though it's an RK3399 base board, which are normally much bigger, it's the same form factor as a Pi, which is, uh, which is very nice. Anyway, let's take a bit of a closer look at this thing. And I think the first thing we should do is to turn it over because as you can see, we don't have a system on a chip on the top of the board. The system on a chip is actually underneath. There it is. There is the uh, Rock chip RK3399. This is a six core processor, a DECA core chip. It's got two ARM Cortex A72 cores running it up to two gigahertz and four ARM Cortex A53 cores running at up to 1.5 gigahertz. And then there's also a GPU, which is an ARM Mali T864, which offers up to 4K output. And you're probably thinking to yourself, that's quite a powerful uh, system on a chip we've got there. You'll need a heatsink on that. We will need a heatsink on that. I'll deal with that in a few minutes' time. Elsewise, on the base of the board, you can see we've got a micro SD card slot. This board can boot from either micro SD or from an EMMC fast module. We'll look at that as well. And elsewise on the bottom of the board, you can see we've got uh, two RAM chips here and two more RAM chips are actually uh, on the top of the board. You can see them there. And these give us on this particular board, the two gigabytes of RAM. This is a DDR3 RAM uh, 1866 RAM. Now, other than that, as you can see, there's lots of connectivity. So let's look at that in my normal way by going around the edges of the board. And if we start with the first short end, the main short end, as I would call it, we've got two fantastic things here. One is we've got gigabit Ethernet, we get that on lots of single board computers, but we've also got four USB 3 ports. I haven't seen that on a single board computer before, certainly not at this sort of price bracket. That's really nice. Easy to say, isn't it? Gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3 ports, really big thing on a single board computer. If we move around to the first long edge, you'll see we've got a USB C port. This is USB-C for power. This board needs five volts at three amps, so you can supply that via the USB-C port. Although you could also use a USB-C port here for OTG. It's got USB-2 connectivity for data connection as well as being used for power. Next to that, we've got a HDMI 2.0A, which supports a 4K output at up to 60p. And then next to that, we've got the socket for the bootable EMMC memory module. We'll look at that later on. Next to that, an audio jack. And then next to that, just down here, we've got the RTC connector, the real-time clock battery connector. Moving to the second short edge, we've got status LEDs next to connectors for a camera and display. And this board can support two cameras. And then next to that, we've got the module for onboard wireless networking, uh, Wi-Fi, this is dual band Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 4.1. And next to it down there, you can see we've got the antenna connectors for those antennas we saw earlier. And I really do think it is good that we've got the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this board. I know some of you say in the comments sometimes, oh, you don't need it on the board, it's great not to have it sometimes for security. That can be true. But I really think these days we should have onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the board. So it's great that we've got it here on the NanoPi M4. Moving to our final edge, we find two GPIO connectors. And the first of these is a standard 40-pin GPIO connector, Raspberry Pi-compatible GPIO connector for your standard maker kind of stuff. 
But the second one, GPIO2, is a 24-pin GPIO connector. I find this one really interesting. There's all kinds of connectivity here. So, for example, there's two USB 2 host interfaces here, so you could add more USB ports to this board. And there's also PCIe times 2 so with the right interface hardware, this connector could be used to connect something like, for example, a SATA SSD. That sounds like a future project for me to investigate. But for now, that is it. That is the hardware, that is the specification of the NanoPi M4. Now, in addition to the NanoPi M4 itself, Friendly Elec have sent me some very welcome accessories. And first of all, we've got these. This is a USB-C power cable and a power adapter. So let's get into these. And uh, there they are. That goes in the back like that to power our uh, NanoPi M4. And uh, this is an international adapter. Many of you worry about me being sent international adapters. No problem, look, I'll just take a... There we are. That'll plug now into my UK socket. In addition, they've also sent me these. Here we have a Ubuntu on a microSD card and an Android 8 on an EMMC flash module. This is an eight gigabyte EMMC flash module. These cost, I think, about nine or ten dollars from a friendly elect. And I think it's a very good sign that the manufacturer of a single board computer has the confidence to send you the operating systems on media ready to plug into the board itself. We all know software support, software availability is a really important thing when it comes to single board computers. Finally, they've also sent me this, which I find more exciting than I probably should. This is a heatsink, a very large heatsink for the NanoPi M4. Let's get it out. This is a big passive heatsink, really, really big passive heatsink. Look at that. That's what I call a heatsink, a really big block of aluminium. This costs uh, about $7, I think, and it goes on the base of the board. Remember, the uh, NanoPi M4 has got the uh, rock chip that is SOC on the base. So this obviously goes on top of here and screws on. I, I really like that. That's a really fantastic way. You, this board is not going to overheat with that on the bottom, is it? So we've got a, inside here a little thermal pad and some screws. So I'll uh, put all this together. And uh, there we are. With Mr. Screwdriver's help, the NanoPi M4 is well and truly ready for action. I, I, I really like that. As some of you will know, I've spent a lot of time cooling single board computers. That has to be the best passive cooling solution I've ever seen on a single board computer. So the NanoPi M4 is ready for action. It's now time to uh, plug in some of those operating system media and to see how it performs. So I thought we'd start with Android and so I've installed the eMMC flash module into the board. Note it can go into the connector either way around, but it must go in so it's over the HDMI socket, as you can see here. Note also that the Android images currently available for the NanoPi M4 have to be installed on an EMC module. So, with the board all up and running as you can see, here we are booting into Android on the NanoPi M4 from a friendly elect, as we can see. Oh look, it's Android. Always good to see Android coming up, isn't it? And that was very fast, wasn't it? There we are, we booted into Android. And uh, this is a very responsive Android uh, install here. It's got um, some basic apps pre-installed, as you can see. Hasn't got the Play Store pre-installed, but uh, I'm sure that could be sorted. It's got a web browser, let's go to that there. And uh, oh look, we can get to the world's uh, favorite website. Everything seems to work perfectly well. We can go to uh, YouTube and uh, obviously get to the uh, World's favourite YouTube channel as well. Look at that, almost 340,000 subscribers. Things are going very well. Anyway, that is a Android running on the NanoPi M4. So, here I am back again, now running Ubuntu on the NanoPi M4. And uh, the board's been running for many hours now, and the heatsink, it does actually get fairly warm, not massively warm, but the sort of warm it would be nice to hold in your hand on a, on a cold day kind of warm. So the heat sink there really works. Anyway, back to Lubuntu, and this is a nicer install. If we just look down the menu just to show you what you get, there's quite a comprehensive install here really. This has got lots of things you might find useful already installed, Chromium web browser, it's got LibreOffice, various other things where Abbey Word. Um, this is a, you know, quite a, a good, good starting point for having a, a Linux distribution. And uh, if we go to the Chromium 
web browser. I've got it running there on the Nanopise M4's own page. There we are. So we've now looked at uh, the Android 8.1 install and also the Ubuntu 16.4. Here we are. But you can see that's a 32-bit. So I don't want to do any sort of real performance tests in this because we've also got here the uh, friendly desktop 18.4, which is 64-bit available. So I think I'm going to download that, stick that on the micro SD card as well, and then we'll boot into that to do any final performance tests. Right, here I am back again with this lovely Starfield desktop and now running Friendly Desktop, which is this distro made available for the Nanopia M4, which is basically based on the Ubuntu 18.04, as we can see on its, its wiki page here. And indeed, if we look in the computer here, you'll see in this little panel here, it tells us it's uh, based upon the Ubuntu. And we can see here with this panel open, which we didn't have in the previous distro we were running, we can look at, say, the processor. We can prove we've got our uh, six cores now running away, doing uh, fun things, keeping this device working. This is not quite as uh, sophisticated as an install as the last one we saw, but there's still a reasonable amount of things here, but it's not, not as much as we had previously. Uh, there's a bit more to do yourself to set things up and make things work. Firefox is there for the web, that's, that's cool, as, as indeed we just saw. Um, I'll just flick down there so you, those of you checking through what's here can see everything that was actually there. And uh, I thought we'd do a couple of performance tests here as we're now running a 64-bit operating system on the Nanopi M4. So we'll go to a terminal. Unfortunately, I can't make this terminal window have any bigger text than this, so we'll have to stick as it is. So I thought we'd run Sysbench. I have a Sysbench CPU max prime test I've used many times before. So we'll set that running. And uh, as I learned in a few videos back, this has been changed that beyond version 1.0. So now it runs exactly for 10 seconds. And the critical thing to compare is how many events are actually uh, taking place in, in that time. And here we see the total number of events is what to 24,965 in the 10 seconds. And to give you a context here, when we ran this test on the Rock Pro 64, which is also based on an RK3399 processor, we did a 25. 108 event. So it's very, very similar. In fact, I wouldn't mind betting if we run this again, uh, we probably might get a slightly different result. I think these two machines are going to be very, very similar. They should be because they're based upon the same processor. Go on, give us a result. I'm getting excited now. What's going to happen? A result. And yes, it's what 25033. So it's that they're very, very similar. This board and the uh, Rock Pro 64 are very, very evenly matched. Having said that, I wouldn't mind running a test I find is a good real-world test. Again, that test I've run many times before, which is to apply a filter in GIMP to a large image. So we'll go in here and go to Tools and uh, Filter. There we are. Filter, Edge Detect, and the I couldn't find it there for a second. And we'll apply this with the standard settings and see how long it takes. And uh, just to remind you, these are the figures we got when we ran this on six other single-board computers a few videos back quite a range of results here, basically the time it takes in seconds. So let's now run this on the Nanopi M4. And uh, that seems to be going reasonably quickly, but not as fast as it might have done actually. That's going to put some distance between it and some of the other boards. Yes, 9.9 .9 seconds. So not as fast doing this particular test as the Rock Pro 64, uh, faster than the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, faster than Odroider, XU4, as you can see. It all comes down, of course, to software and how it's optimized for the particular board. But regardless, we've now seen three operating systems, Android and two desktop Linux distros, running on the Nanopi M4. So, here we are at the end of another video. And throughout my testing, this very solid piece of hardware, the Nanopi M4, has performed very well indeed. And just to pass on a final piece of information you may be interested in, you know I like the uh, very large heatsink on the base of this board, and you might have noticed it's got lots of screw thread holes down each side. And I've discovered these screw threads are actually quarter inch screw threads, standard screw threads. So you can take a lot of standard mounting kit, here I've just got a bracket, and you can screw that in there. I can do that on camera. Never try and do things on camera when you're doing a piece of camera, but there we are. That would go in, and that's now firmly mounted to what is, in this case, a photographic bracket. But the fact you can take a board like this and, using its heatsink, mount it to all kinds of things, offers all kinds of interesting rigging possibilities. Anyway, 
That's now it for this video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.